Now, disagreements before, during and after elections are an inevitable, perhaps even normal part of the political process. There simply isn't any such thing as a conflict-free election season from the primaries all the way to the result of the ballot, particularly in Nigeria. In fact, when managed properly, some legal eagles have argued that such disagreements, if taken to court, can actually have positive outcomes, such as setting precedents that make future elections more secure, and the political parties less inclined to allow irregularities to occur, but only if such cases have merit and are not frivolous. So where exactly does the case initiated against the ruling APC party by the immediate past Minister of State for Education, Emeka Wajuba, fit in? Along with an NGO known as the Incorporated Trustees of Rights for All International, he's seeking to disqualify Bola Ahmed Tinubu from the 2023 ballot. The allegation is that he acted in breach of the 2022 Electoral Act. So exactly how has he done this? And what merit, if any, does the case have as Nigerians await the verdict of the court, which is due in early December? Of more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the public policy and legal analyst, Oseluka Zikora. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Charles, for having me. You've been following this case for some time. Set out for us in broad strokes what it's all about. Well, first, yeah, it's the incorporated trustees of rights for all international that instituted this case mm. and um, the genesis was that they took about all the 30 aspirants under the APC and some other political parties to court over certain issues they believe were not in conformity with either the constitution or the electoral act so as the case went on, they, it came to a, a, a point in time that they had to focus on just the candidate that emerged from the process of the APC primaries. And why is that? that that's the candidate that emerged from the All uh, Progressive Congress. Right. Uh, but why do they focus on that? Because... To the exclusion of To the, the exclusion others. so that they can really have uh, the issues dispensed with as quickly right. as possible. Okay. Uh, so now, having those removed the other aspirants from the case, I believe that Chief Chukweme Kamwajuba, who was one of the aspirants, initially a defendant in the case, then sought to be joined in the matter as a plaintiff. Mm. And the judge of the Federal High Court in Abuja, Justice Ekwo, ruled that he can be joined. Uh, so uh, having been joined, he amended the originating summons. Because he's a lawyer himself. He's a, he's a lawyer. Yeah. That's to, perhaps to suit his own objectives, mm. uh, which uh, I believe is to be declared as the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, the APC. Now that would seem a little bit uh, maybe far-fetched, having looking at the fact that he scored just one vote mm. at the primaries uh, that, that which was held on, on June 8th and uh, you, you will begin to wonder on what basis then is he seeking this and really I'll just in this program um, I think there are three major things that I see in his amended originating summons that actually the, the court I'll be looking forward interested in seeing how the court is able to determine mm. those three aspects. And these three key issues, one is the fact that he's saying that the candidate of the APC candidate, um, in his new forms that he presented to the INEC, failed to state his primary and secondary schools. Therefore, he failed to provide to INEC the basic qualifications for contesting the office of the president. Right, that's one. That's one, which right. is the, the WASC and the primary school certificate. That's one. And then secondly, he also goes to, he, he moreover, in that aspect, he's saying that that same candidate did benefit at a certain time 
by swearing an affidavit that he went to certain schools at the primary and secondary school levels. Now he is denying that and he is asking the court to determine first whether the degree certificate which is now stating in that form would be enough substitution for the basic requirement which is WASC or the primary school certificate and moreover saying that for you to be able to get the degree is predicated on you having the either the primary Yeah, but it's fairly obvious, obvious that, I mean, if you went to university and went then, to high school, then, then the, you would the, have gone the, to the primary that, and secondary the, the, the school. The issue is I mean, that stating is why is he not presenting those right. certificates. Well, maybe he doesn't have them. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> I mean, doesn't have, yeah. And, but, but, but these are matters that... Right, okay. Well, what's because, the next thing? The next thing is um, the issue of the the provision of the Electoral Act 2022. Yeah. Uh, there's a section in there, section 90, subsection 3, right. which states that a political party shall not accept any monetary or other contributions, which is more than 50 million naira, mm -hmm. unless it can identify the source of the money or other contributions. Mm. Yes, I, it's clearly stated there. I mean, I've seen that um, act. Yeah. The issue here mm. is not about the 15 million naira. Now, APC would have not gone into this if they had asked f only for 50 million naira as right. The, the, it's because the they asked for 100 the payment. million. They asked for 100 million right. for the nomination for the form. nomination form. Right. And um, and so the the bit about that is that if you have to pay more than 15 million naira then you have to provide the sources mm. for which you raised that money. That's what they And so that. none of the other aspirants... Contestants, none of who, the other who aspirants took part, yeah. who took part... Provided, the, provided that accepted Mecca Wajuba himself. Chukwe Mecca Wajuba. Right. He, he has a 77-page uh, uh, bank statements showing who and who contributed right. for him to raise the 100 million naira to be able to buy the mm. APC uh, nomination for right. and 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 what people would um, argue would be is payment for forms is it a contribution yes as envisaged by the electoral act mm. Uh, section 90 subsection 3 and his argument is that it is it is because right. the, you know the ordinary definition of contribution is either a gift or a payment mm. that is done to a collective thing so uh, that's the definition of contribution right. and he's saying that that's um, the third I think that Asura Jio Bola Tinibu is the third defendant in that right. matter that he did not provide the sources for which he raised and obviously million. it's focused on, on Tinubu now because he's the he's, presidential he's the only candidate person I mean, all the now, others are, uh, no are no longer in there. the race. So yeah. he's focused on that. And he's saying that, that it's not even a function of disqualification because the candidate is qualified to contest the office of Mr. President. He's making a distinction between qualification and eligibility. Yeah. That because he did not fulfill that leg of the provision, mm. he remains it makes him ineligible. ineligible right. To and, that, and that's a very tricky legal point, isn't it? Mm. An issue of eligibility, not of qualification. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and I guess that uh, the judge would have to. <laughs> mm. have to untangle that knot for yeah, us. Yeah, he, he would have <laughs> to because, I mean, that, that's a very, very fine, very thin line oh, of well, separation. Yes. Um, but in the lead up to that APC primary, yes. did um, uh, Mr. Wajuba, did he draw the attention of the APC to this matter? Did he write to the APC leadership about this? You know, I'm not his spokesperson. No, I don't think from, you were. But from what I... I mean, you're a legal oh, yeah, and public from what affairs I analyst. Heard, yeah. From what I heard um, is that he did write to the party, mm. even at the point of the screening of the aspirants for the nomination right. of them, that he did point out to the screening committee that this is a requirement 
of the Electoral Act mm. that if other aspirants come here and are not able to provide to them the sources of which they were able to raise the 100 million naira for the nomination, that that makes them ineligible to contest. In other that words, the reason I'm asking that is that it would seem, because I suppose these are all things that, are, that go into consideration when a case is being d d decided, that there is no malintent on his part. If, if he had told the APC well ahead of going to court that this is, and well ahead of the primaries as they were you know, submitting their forms and so on and defending whatever mm. it is they put in there. If he had said to them, written to them, to say that there is an anomaly here, these people are supposed to do this, that suggests that he was actually looking out for the APC. Yes. Rather than going against the APC. According to I mean? some interviews that I've heard right. that he is uh, giving, uh, about why he's pursuing this mm. case on, in some discussions. He did point out that his intent mm. is really to save the party. Yeah, in other words, warning them ahead of time that this could lead you time. into trouble. And also that this particular case that mm. he's pursuing is also to prevent the APC mm. from losing out completely because the opponents may still spring this up mm. even if their candidate ends up contesting yeah. the election. But of course that opponent has ended up being him <laughs> rather than someone no, else yeah, because yeah, I, I, he's I, the one I, I, who's but, now but suing let, the party. Okay, let, 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 let's take it this way. Right. Uh, let's, uh, February 23 comes mm. and Asuaju wins the election. Then the PDP candidate or the Labour Party candidate decides to go to it becomes a post-election yes, matter. Yes, I see what you mean. A post-election yeah. matter. And they could raise these yeah. issues mm. that I've been sure this man was not qualified yeah. to... Uh, was so ineligible. the loss would be greater then. The, the loss would be greater yeah. to the APC. So uh, that, that, that is what is happening mm. here. Uh, and because if you look at Section 84, uh, subsection 13 mm. of the elect same Electoral Act, it says we are a political party fails to comply with the provisions of this act in the conduct of his primaries, his candidate for election shall not be included in the election for the particular position in issue. Right. So that means, and I, I, I believe also that he has brought out this matter mm. uh, before the court to, to ask the court to interpret whether this section does not make INEC, which is also part of the defendants yes. in the case, to delist that particular nominated candidate of the APC. Well, I mean, the, the, um, the, the sort of precedence that this would set, I mean, however it goes, uh, would be quite extraordinary, really. It, it? it would be, and, and, and let's not also forget the primary objective of the lawmakers in putting this particular provision, mm. especially the provision about uh, the amount of money that you need, the limit, limit, yeah, limit, the limit the of 50 of, million, of 50 million yeah. and then if it's more than that, you need to provide the source. Yeah. It's because of the issues that we currently have, the issues of money laundering, the issues yes. of things like that. So as to make sure that... So these are very important what, issues. What monies that the political parties are bringing into the system... Yeah, it's are clean, money. Are clean money. And, so, but his opponents... Um, say he's just a frustrated loser who can't accept that he's lost and move on. I mean... Well, then they haven't conversed right. those in court. That's not what they have conversed as their defense for. for well, obviously. For, yeah. I mean, it's in the court yeah, of public they, opinion. Yeah, That's where the they're saying that, right. Opinion. I mean... Yeah. And it's really a function that at the end of the day, when the court do decide, then mm. we will then know whether he's... Uh, just a meddlesome interloper or right. somebody who is uh, frustrated or sure. whatever. But that's not what they, they have uh, right. in their preliminary. But based on your own assessment mm -hmm. of this case and of the motive behind it, yeah. what is your sense of the aim behind filing this suit? What are the plaintiffs hoping to achieve?
Well, a, a, in a court case, the court is not a Father Christmas mm. that it just does things out of the ordinary. It stems from what is before the court mm. and the requests that have been made of the court to act. I think that in one of the places in the in the he's asked the court to declare him being the only person who contested mm. that primary and scored a vote in that primary, having been the only person out of the ten that contested who fulfilled this condition that the electoral act does. Uh, yeah, but, but is it possible that the court may say, and I'm not, obviously, uh, I mean, it, we're not able to interpret what the court is going to do but within the realm of probability uh, i don't know whether there's any precedent in the past or whatever about this but is it possible that the court could say okay um you have a point with the 50 million naira thing but um we don't think that you're the, the one who should step into the breach as it were well the, the courts again cannot award yeah, yeah, it, it wouldn't be the court. It would, it would have to be the party the, the, that would make that decision. That, that, that should have been any of the any of the aspirants. Yes, yeah, you said the, he's asking the court. Yes, he's for asking him the court for, for, for right. him to step in. Right, uh, providing the reasons and evidence why right. he should be the one to step in. But then, as for the other, the, the courts just arriving at a decision that it can be him, that it could be one of the other ten. Mm. No, the one, none of the other ten did come to the court. To say that we paid hundred million naira to APC for the nomination for mine, we did provide to the APC the sources mm. of that money. None of them, yeah, except him. That's that's a, that's quite an extraordinary, um, potentially extraordinary, potentially earth-shattering issue. Mm -hmm. Now, this case has been, I understand, is that set for judgment soon? Uh, uh, I believe by December the 12th that the judge should be able to be ruling on this. And uh, but by the way, the issue is that um, the the defendant, the third defendant, did was represented, and they have also raised certain objections. Yeah, and, and what are their objections? They, they, part of it is that that the court lacks requisite jurisdiction to here and determine the matter. So it's about the that, locus, that really? The locus, that, right. the, that the matter is not properly constituted as it were, and that also, apart from the jurisdiction issue, they have also conversed that the actions of the plaintiffs were borders on purported uh, alleged electoral offenses which are criminal in nature, mm. and as such, that criminal allegations are not brought or prosecuted through originating summons. That would be interesting to mm. see how the courts will distangle this matters and, and, and determine the case. So it's a very, very, very interesting, uh, and, and thank you for bringing that to our attention. But, but what would be the implications for the upcoming 2023 election and for the participation on the presidential level of the APC if this were to go against them? Well, if that goes against the party, mm it will only become detrimental to the party if the court does not allow them to field, field, field a, a supplementary candidate. That's, or the person who has asked to be, to be fielded is not given that opportunity. That's if the court says, okay, oh well and good, yeah, this is the only person who was qualified, therefore he is the... Then the party, the party should has a candidate and the party should be able to sell that candidate and the candidate should be able to sell himself. Yeah, but what that, if the party argues that he, that, that candidate did not even attend the primaries because because uh, Meke uh, uh, was absent. He, from he didn't the, he didn't attend the. Yeah, uh, 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 Majuba did not attend the, the uh, primaries. Yeah, but the issue there is that having not been there, right. the party still presented his name on the ballot. Right, and he and, got a vote. And he got a vote. Right, yeah, he got a vote. Right. So that 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 kind of ties the hand of the party. Right, but mm. but would it have beyond just the APC? Would it have implications for the 2023 election? Well, I, I, I really don't um, see the implications that it would have because uh, Chief Majuba 
has always made his intentions known right. to aspire for that office. Yeah. So it's a function now. The only implications that might be on his ability to perhaps raise the same kind of structure mm. or machinery that the current candidate has. Uh, perhaps that, 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 that could be the challenge there. But that does not mean that, he, for, for instance, he's a young man, mm. he could come in and the youth could look at him and say, ah, this, this is someone that we, we, we can flow with. Right. Oh, all right. Okay. So, well, we'll have to wait and, and see what the court decides. But yeah. uh, Oselika, I want to thank you very much indeed for bringing this case, I mean, to us and describing it the way that you have. Um, Oselika Zikora is a public policy and legal analyst. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.